welcome to October Gallery. Can you hear me? And welcome to the exhibition of Jordan and Craig, who is with us and her family. And welcome so much to you. Please, welcome. I was working on an exhibition, a series of exhibitions of artists from the Cordillera, which runs from Alaska down to the south part of Mexico. And during this great search of mine, which is continuing, I came upon the work of an artist in Santa Fe, New Mexico, named Jordan Ann Craig. And this is the painting I first saw. <laughs> and I said, that's the woman for me. <laughs> that's the artist for me. Because I am from the mountains, and so it spoke highly to me, and also all of the cultures that surrounded my whole existence. Last evening, the gallery was quiet. Everybody had gone for the moment. I came in this door, and I only hope that each of you will try it, that there is nobody here. I was hit by a thousand arrows. I died happily. <laughs> it's so strong and powerful to me. And I, I implore each of you to approach the paintings and allow your body to uh, zimmer into them, I guess. Something like that. So that's the kind of chart. I knew for sure then that the space had been created perfectly and artistically by Elizabeth Lafayette. Well, I come in at the perfect continuation. I walked into this room from this side yesterday morning, <laughs> and all the paintings were huddled together on this wall. And I thought, oh my God, they're so much larger than I thought. <laughs> How am I going to hang them all on this wall? So it took quite a while to figure out where they were going to go and where we could get the maximum of ecstasy from each of the works speaking to the other work. I was sitting in a talk in the exhibition Noctal 2 about two years ago um, of Jordan and other artists. And behind me on this wall was a series of works by Jordan. One was a subtle gray, one was subtle pink, red and blue. And all the works were so precise and so evocative that I really wanted to continue working with Jordan now that Chile had introduced her to the gallery after she found this huge black and white work. So I took Jordan to the, to the um, Hayward Gallery and we visited Bridget Riley exhibition, which happened to be on at the same time. And so we each explored the works, and it's always so interesting to explore an exhibition with another artist, because everybody sees different things. And I was extraordinarily excited by the drawings and sketches of Bridget Riley, which had a greater subtlety in it. It was not so super precise, and I think Jordan's work has that. Um, it is very precise, but it uh, has a poetry in it, and it has a, a light and a power, which is quite extraordinary. So we went down the road and um, discussed possibilities in the future, and one of the ideas was potentially, very, very, very potentially, a solo exhibition of Jordan's, and we were discussing of Jordan working in artist studios here in London, it was at the end of 2019, we were all happily, <laughs> pre-pandemic, you know, thinking, planning, you know, everything was possible in that way. Well, the pandemic came in between, but that did not hold us or Jordan up in having this exhibition here two years later. Jordan has a studio in Santa Fe, which is a city of light where the color and the light is so transparent. I once was there and... I saw an ultramarine blue, and I must say, I've never seen blue like this in my life before. It was as if there was no distinction between the color and myself. The light was in the air, was so clear. And this is where Jordan produced these works. All of the works in this room, the intuitively gathered together, were all produced in Santa Fe, except the one that punches you when you come in, this one, <laughs> which was produced in Wyoming, in a residency there. New cross. 
In the other room, you find a mixture of works being produced in New Cross, which are mainly the sort of browner works in the corner, and also one pink work originating from a residency in Roswell. So I just wanted to say lastly, when you take paintings, you know, so you're all here waiting to be gathered together and to be displayed. And it is so wonderful when an artist gives you the freedom, and Jordan gave us that freedom, to play with the works, to make them speak to each other in yet other different new ways to create new conversations, to create new dimensions. And for that I'm grateful because it allowed me a wonderful creative artistic experience here with Jordan's work yesterday. So thank you so much. <laughs> Some of you know me. Why, why this woman is here is because she is very supportive of her own culture's work and is the ambassador for her own culture. And that's a nation state and what you don't realize what important a nation state a nation is in America. It has a high status. So that's a great uh, to have you here. She was professor of art in Plymouth for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. What interests me about her career is that she has curated a couple of, co-curated a couple of shows at the National Gallery on what Native American coming to England was about, mm -hmm. how it was for both sides, what happened and what the history of those transactions were about Americans coming into the United States, uh, to Great Britain. So this uh, was a huge effort and a book, and so welcome to share your knowledge about the work you see behind you. <laughs> Thank you. So honored and so pleased to be here to open the show. Um, I would just like to say that this is so exciting to see a first solo show for Jordan, a Native American woman artist. I think it's just magnificent and it's about time. <laughs> and, and of course, would be at the October Gallery. Um, it's encouraging to see here a growing presence of Native American, Native North American contemporary art in venues outside North America. Because um, here in, in the UK, we just don't see this. And the October Gallery is certainly one of those places at the forefront of this push to bring over more and more contemporary Native and other artists from around the world. So it's a fabulous venue. And I think Jordan's work is being increasingly internationally recognized. She's been awarded several residencies and fellowships since, gra since her graduation with a BFA from Dartmouth, Dartmouth College, a place that I once long ago dreamed I could go to. It's very <laughs> Ivy League <laughs> school. <laughs> and um, I became aware of her work from two group exhibitions which she participated in and Bristol's preeminent Native American contemporary gallery, Rainmaker. The works you see shown here tonight display the artist's remarkable abilities to hold past, present, and future relationships within a beautiful balance. And I just personally really respond to each of these. Um, my auntie, my Dakota auntie, was a beater, and she was extremely talented, and used to beat onto Chumash baskets, because she had to live in, in Southern California, and it's that sort of the graciousness of, of the way that Jordan has, has presented the, the beauty of her culture, the plains culture in these paintings. I just would like you to join me in please congratulating her on this first solo show. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out tonight. It's a pleasure having each and every single one of you here. Special thank you to Chili and Elizabeth and Stephanie and Dee and Paige and everybody here um, who put on this amazing show. I mean, it, this is, October Gallery is such a strong community. There's so many people that it took for me and these works to be here right now. So huge thank you. So let's see. Hi, my name's Jordan. <laughs> Don't know if I said that. I'm a Northern Cheyenne painter and printmaker. Um, and I wanted to say a little story about this painting. Stop crying, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> this painting right behind, right behind me. And so, okay, take us back. I mean, we were about to do this show here. 
Um, I was going to come to London, make the paintings, a few things happened in the world, couldn't make it here. And I'm in Roswell, New Mexico, painting with my amazing and talented and vigorous assistant, Bailey Ann Craig. And so we're making all these paintings, and it's a really weird time in this world. And we're in this isolated community in, in Roswell, New Mexico. And um, we had a setback. <laughs> there was a moth infestation happening. Um, an unlikely setback. And there was like hundreds of moths going throughout the studio, defecating on my paintings. <laughs> Little tiny poops everywhere. And Bailey was getting so furious because we were working so hard making this clean, literally and figuratively work. And we had all these moths to deal with. And, and Bailey, she was responsible for them. <laughs> she, she annihilated a few of them, a lot of them. And she would take the fly swatter and she would protect the studio <laughs> until accidentally plopping over, plop, <laughs> knocking over a piece of glass that went all the way down the front of this completed painting. So of course I cried, and then she cried more, and then I cried more, and then we were like, oh no, what are we gonna do? I was gonna rip it off and take it to the dumpster. That was really dramatic, it was ruined, it was, I was, horribly harsh on her. And so for the first time ever, I had to go back to the drawing board and figure out how can I fix this painting without um, actually taking it off and starting over because we've done so much work with it. And so I literally went back and fixed the pattern to cover up every tiny scrape. And we made a painting together, again, that we liked even more than the first one. It was way better. And that painting is the pink one in the next room. But during that time of panic, I went straight to my computer and I designed this painting behind me. So I was like, that one's ruined. I'm going to make a new painting and it's going to be gray and dark and sad and moth colored. <laughs> <laughs> and dusty, you know, that dusty, mothy texture that I was living around. And so this painting is called Moth to Light Baby. And we made two paintings based off of this weird moth infestation, isolated time, <laughs> and they are very special um, to me and to Bailey, to the show. I mean, it's, it's, it's still nice, <laughs> but it, it has that like gritty moth background <laughs> that we live through. I mean, I'm telling you, when you looked outside and there's lights on your windows, you saw thousands trying to get inside, and so that's what this painting, it's, it's, it's a new painting and it's a new start. And the other one is not necessarily a new start, but it got, got an, uh, it's called um, She Got Work Done. Yeah. She really got like a surgical procedure of paint done to, to fix what was there. And so that, that is kind of like this work, you know? I mean, nothing really happened so easily and it was really hard to make this work in this time, but um, Bailey really got me to my studio every day and we made it happen together. So, huge thank you to my baby sister, Bailey. Mm -hmm. A lot of these works are about my family, my sisters, my culture, learning about my culture, uh, being a Northern Cheyenne woman, um, celebrating being a Native woman in this world, and uh, being able to do things that my family's dreamt of me doing forever. So, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves, and I hope you never have to have a moth infestation. This <laughs> <laughs> is really scary. <laughs> and um, thank you. You'll get to hear more on Saturday at 3, an artist talk with Dee Hockney, and at 3 o'clock. So I welcome you, Dee, who is very key and instrumental in this whole exhibition. We'll be speaking with Jordan and Craig here, Saturday, 3. Catalogs are the front desk.